Cell 411 is a great free app for Android and iPhone. It allows you to set up public and private cells for dealing with crime, emergencies, setting up neighborhood watch, activism, and even protecting your kids from bullies on the street or at school. Cell 411 gives your cells turn-by-turn -turn directions to your location with one touch on your phone. There is also a Bluetooth panic button available that can be worn on your wrist, belt, or around your neck. Cell 411 has real-time chat for each alert so you can discuss the incident with family or friends in real-time video streaming. The video is stored on Cell 411's servers so your evidence cannot be deleted if your phone is taken or destroyed. Cell 411 has decentralized ride-sharing that allows for payment in any form – crypto, barter, silver, cash, etc. Cell 411 does not take a cut of your fare. Get Cell 411 free on Google Play and the iTunes Store or go to GetCell411.com. That's GetCell411.com. Literally all of those I want to privatize my roads. I want to become a road baron. <laughs> you got to privatize cities. You have to privatize your house. You have to privatize nah, all other people can, No, other privatized. people can privatize that shit. I want to privatize my roads. I want to become the road czar. That's what I want to be. That's, that's actually going to be my title. That's I'll have a road company, and my, my business title will be road czar. Roads are awesome. <laughs> Fuck yeah, that'd be awesome. God, I love capitalism. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm going to pass. So, you know, I'm, I'm not worried about failing. At least I'm not worried about failing. The rest but. of it can work itself out. As long as I pass <laughs> the class, I don't care. There you go. Oh, that's good. Well, not exactly a mark of excellence, but you know, I got to get there. I got to hey. get there. Well, you've, you've <laughs> definitely steps. Well, yeah, you've outlined how, how much, you know, how this has been rather difficult <laughs> during a couple of the episodes in the past couple of months. So yeah, man, I can imagine that you're just at this point, you're just like, if I pass, yes, that was, that, that's all I need. I don't care. <laughs> that's good. So, all right. Well, that's good for you, man. Uh, I guess in, in what else we got? Well, in my world, I uh, I had court again today. Uh, I actually posted. Ah, uh, yes. I posted. I a watched the video. Yeah, on, I posted. The, I posted a video. I posted a video. I didn't post it to the Facebook. Seeds page. I, I just posted it to my personal page. Maybe I'll throw it up on the Seeds page. Maybe it'll be there before mm-hmm. this actually gets posted. But anyway, uh, in case I don't actually get around to doing that, yeah. So court happened again today. Seventh appearance, I believe. I was trying to count them up today because without actually looking for dates. Um, I believe this was my seventh appearance, not counting my arraignment uh, in the court <laughs> now. And it uh, it got adjourned again because despite having a new lawyer who is a bit of a bulldog, uh, the DA's office still managed to stonewall him enough that they didn't provide the videotape for him, even though I, I, I still didn't understand what happened. He was supposed to get a copy of it from my former lawyer, but I don't know what happened with that. But apparently he wants to do a sit down with the DA and watch the video together. That should be entertaining. I wish I could be, a, you know, be in the room for that one. But uh, it looks like Hmm. Uh, I, I still don't actually know what's going to happen, but uh, apparently the ACOD option is back on the table. What what does it stand for? Uh, adjournment in contemplation of dismissal. So if that actually is that if that's actually what the DA finally decides to uh, offer us, then that's the one deal I told my lo- this new lawyer originally that I would take because you know that means I get no- it, the case is dismissed in six months as long as I'm a good boy for six months uh, after the fact. Uh, because of the nature of the case and because of the publicity, my lawyer did warn me that there's a good chance they'll try to stick me with community service on top of that, which I'm not thrilled about, but weighing out the options between taking that and having to deal with community service versus actually taking the time to, to wait out the trial, which at this point, who knows how long they'll actually schedule it for a way they'll actually schedule it for. Cause this has been going on for seven months already. <laughs> and I haven't, you know, it's just been, a, you know, it's just been adjournments and, and stuff like that. One after another, you've just got another six months to go, man. It's just going to be six more months. Yeah. So exactly. So, uh, <laughs> I, I, I rather, cause I, I think this, I think it's like 18 months before I have a, have a case against, you know, speedy trial stuff or whatever or anything, or like it's that, you know, basically like they've kept me too long at that point. <laughs> um, but I'm nowhere near that. So I, you know, weighing that out, I'm thinking I might as you know, because I want to get out of here. That's the other problem. I'm trying to get the heck out of New York. And apparently that's what my lawyer is counting on, which is funny because that's what my last count- lawyer was going to try to count on if, if it came to it mm-hmm. was me leaving the state because now my lawyer wants a letter from my real estate agent who is trying to write up a contract with the guy who made the offer on the house a month ago. And we try to work all that out. So now I got to get a lawyer from, I got to get a letter from one lawyer to another uh, to try to prove to the court that I'm definitely leaving. Cause apparently a lot of people try to make this claim and then they end up sticking around and not actually leaving. You know, my lawyer was like, yeah, people say they're going to the army. They're doing this, they're doing that. Anything to try to convince the judge that they're not a threat. He's like, but if I can basically prove that you're literally leaving the state, then they can't claim you're a threat to anybody in this community anymore. And you're essentially somebody else's problem, which, which man that makes them more, um, amenable to the whole idea of the ACOD in the first place. You go menace somewhere else, buddy. Exactly. (laughs) So... So it's nothing, nothing set in stone yet, but apparently that's been brought back on the table, which is something I thought was, was, I was never going to see. So that's progress. And, you know, my lawyer who his attitude from the beginning was, if you hire me, I'm in this to win it. Like, that's my attitude. I don't like to take, take deals. Um, I want to win, you know, unless we get like, you know, the sweet, you know, a sweet, he's like, obviously if we get like a sweetheart deal, then yeah, we take that. He's like, but my goal is to win. And he's like, he told me this morning, he's like, remember the thing I said about sweetheart deals? I'm like, yes. He goes, so yeah, if they offer this, I'm pretty sure I should, I'm going to recommend that you take it <laughs> because also that if, if that's the case, that also saves me the other half of his fee. Um, because the deal I worked out with him was cash up front. 
uh, flat fee and an additional flat fee if it goes to trial. So if this happens, I get to get out of New York earlier than waiting to stick around for the whole trial aspect and the possibility of still actually losing despite the, you know, the, the state not really having much evidence against me other than a clearly doctored news news clip. Um, wait, wait, wait. Hold, hold on a second. Hold on a second. So you mean to tell me that your lawyer is actually going to recommend that you take a course of action that will cut him out of potential payout? Yes. So this greedy capitalist who runs his own business is going to give you advice that's not going to make him money. Yes. Sickening, yeah, isn't unbelievable. it? What a <laughs> bastard. What a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Fire him and get somebody that's going to take you. Yeah, so, so yeah, so, so that's so like I said, no, nothing set in stone yet, but apparently that's the way it's looking. And uh, my lawyer said, the quicker I can get his, uh, get him the letter from my other lawyer, the better. Because unfortunately, uh, the problem was, you know, it was adjourned because we had to. Because again, they they didn't actually get him the tape in time to sit and sit that schedule a sit down viewing with him. So he really had no choice but to do that if we wanted to work everything else out. But because you know, it's now. November 30th and they only you know I think the think the people in the court only show up for like the first week maybe week and a half of December and then they get like a nice extended vacation so basically anything that happens in this past like three weeks was getting scheduled for January already so I don't have to go I'm not going back again until like the end of January so I have to wait almost two months for that that's the downside Oh, what a joke. You know, that does kind of put a kink in my plans for uh, for leaving, too, because, the, uh, you know, as I said, I have my my other my real estate lawyer working on a contract for my house. And the uh, the last time I spoke to the guy who was in, who made the offer, I told him that end of January, I would, you know, I would like to try to close, you know, if that was OK with him to close the deal then. And he was fine with that. But I had already pushed it back a month because originally when we met, it was going to be the end of December. Now I've already pushed it back to the end of January. I don't know if he's going to be willing to go to the end of February. I can't really afford to pay for the house for another month to stay to the end of February anyway. So I'm going to have to figure all this out. I'm going to start pressing my lawyer because uh, once I actually get him this letter and make sure things get sped up as quickly as possible because I would like to at least have an idea because the vibe I got from him is basically once he gets to have that sit down, we should have, you know, they should basically, it won't be, they won't have, they'll, they'll, they may not officially offer the deal yet, but they'll pretty much let them know if that's the route they're going to take. And once I know that, then I can make better decisions. Um, cause then the only other thing that'll be up in the air is if they do give, you know, if they order a community, you know, if they tack on community service, then I have to figure out if they're going to let me do it somewhere else or if I actually have to do it here, you know? So that's my story for now. That's where I'm at. You know, basically just another hurry up and wait moment. <laughs> so what yeah. about you, Dave? What's been up with you since we've been gone for two weeks? Uh, just farming. That's about it. <laughs> just preparing for, you know, some stuff for spring. Other than that, just making memes. Making memes. That's something I haven't done in a while. I've kind of been largely i've still been listing largely away from the social media except to uh now i'm in a, except in like the crypto groups that i'm in and stuff like that which actually leads right into one of the things i guess we were going to talk about tonight is you know stuff in the crypto world uh the whole mining game which is what i i've been the other thing i've been busy with lately <laughs> and it's been an adventure man yeah I don't know. I know I talked to you about this, Dave, and <laughs> you know you said you didn't really know much about this, but you know at least you you know the because I'm 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 using the wind I'm using a Windows Windows for my operating system on my rig, um, so at least you you were going to be able to help me with some of the stuff with that end because I am not you know this is not my fort you know my, not my area of expertise. Uh, the physical build wasn't a problem because that's the one thing I did learn how to do when I when <laughs> I was a quasi computer tech back in the early two thousands. Uh, you know, and I did very basic programming, but it was stuff that it was repetitive because it was, you know, basically, I think it was a Linux system we were using and it was basically just the same code over and over and over again that I was writing or whatever. Yeah. So, you know, it, it was. I, well, it, if you're already if you already have some familiarity with Linux, you should be able to run whatever you need to run out of Ubuntu. That was I mean, that was my it's my understanding that that's like the preferred method for running miners. Well, and yes, and that that is true. That is true. But. Uh, number one, that was you know 15 years ago at this point. So that's like riding a bike. Anything you, I did learn, forget. I've long forgotten. And you know, it's, so, it's, it all depends on if you have clear instructions on how 
to do it. Well, 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 well it. we're, we're yeah. going to get to that because I have had pretty clear instructions. Um, so, so that was the thing. So I decided to get into this. Uh, I, I talked well, first about off, it. we need to tell anybody that doesn't know what mining. What oh, it sure. Is, what crypto crypto mining. Yes. Crypt cryptocurrency mining. We need to at least give a quick rundown for everybody. Oh, sorry. Oh, look at that. I'm so I'm so good about this when I'm on the radio, not trying not to bury the lead. And here I am burying the lead. Uh, yeah. So, so, so the crypto. <laughs> Dave, Dave's the sane one in it for once. Thank you, Dave. Uh, yes. So, well, I'm assuming the pe most almost everybody who listens to our show at least has heard of Bitcoin, um, if not other cryptocurrencies at this point. We've talked about it enough in, re in recent weeks. So, yeah, the idea of mining it is, you know, trying to harvest your own without having to pay for it. And I guess the simplest way to explain it is you're basically in mining. Mining cryptocurrencies essentially means you're using your computer to to solve very complicated math problems, right? That's bas that's that's pre a pretty simplified way yeah. to explain it, right? So you're using either the hashing power of your processor or uh, or your uh, video cards, which uh, is the method I'm I'm trying to use. Um, which has become the more popular one because you can get a heck of a lot more power out of your out of video cards that people used to use for you know game you know g PC gaming and stuff like that. You know when the crypto world came up, some pretty smart people figured out, hey, we could take these video cards and mess with their settings and jack these things up to create you know to mine to mine these cryptocurrencies. So yeah, so I think that I think that covers it, Dave. Yeah, so that that's bas that's basically what mining is, and that's. That I, I think that was the quick rundown. Yeah. It's it's basically quick, quick and without dirty. the miners, without the miners, crypto doesn't work. So yeah, and the miners, the miners are also yeah, the miners are also what keep it keep it going because when you're mining it, you know you're solving the stuff, and then uh, you know transactions. You're, you're signing transactions onto the blockchain. So exactly. That way the blockchain has it as okay. This totally happened, and we can confirm it, and we're good. Exactly. And then as a miner, you get a, some kind of fee, right? Yeah, right. Because you get the transaction fees. That's how that works, right? <laughs> yeah, you get paid. Exactly. And you get, you know, you get little pieces of uh, whatever coin you're mining. I, I was particularly interested in this because I wanted to start mining Monero, which is the one coin that I've wanted for a while, but do not have because I don't like messing around on the exchanges. Because number one, I'm an I'm an idiot as as you know as mentioned before. Uh, when it comes to some of this You're stuff, an exchange phobe. And uh, num you know, number two, number two, I, I had a bad experience the one time I did, and number three, I just I I would rather avoid stuff like that. It just you know for security reasons and stuff like that. <laughs> I know I know plenty of people hmm. use them and they are secure, but my systems aren't always the most secure, and I recognize that. That's why I have a brand new system for my miner, which is much more, which I'm trying to make more secure. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so anyway, I, it just, it's just not my thing. I've just, I've, you know, I, when I bought into cryptos originally, I got Bitcoin and I hodled that for a while. And then eventually I diversified with the Bitcoin I already had because it had appreciated in value by that point. Fiend phone, fiend phone. And we, Hey, well, welcome back, Andre. And we, uh, yeah, I don't know what the fuck happened, but I'm, I'm here now. <laughs> it's All okay. Now. Yes. So yeah, so oh, I I got I we're got. We're glad you're back. <laughs> yes, I you know I, all I did was just uh, I you know exchange some of my Bitcoin for some other cryptocurrencies, and that's how I ended up getting what I have now. You know, I didn't actually I haven't bought anything since, and I just I would just rather well not. that and you did those dirty dances down there for that. This is true. You know, um, dance for Bitcoin, thing. but. <laughs> But and plus, I also don't have any. Actual no, it was dance for dash. I, I fucked I, the I, joke up. I, I don't. I don't actually. I don't have any FRNs at the moment to be putting into anything else anyway. So I can't really purchase Monero. And because I don't want to deal with the exchanges and stuff like that, actually getting Monero for me is difficult because I can, you know, I can use Coinami to get everything else I want. You know, I can just exchange it through either Shapeshift or Changely. And get it, you know, right, you know, get yeah. it pretty much right away. And that's just more, that's just more simple for me. I'd rather do it that way. So anyway, so I did, you know, Monero, I was like, I looked into it and the, with the addition of the, the newer, the Vega cards that came out, I guess in the past, what is this, maybe six months or less at this point. The, uh, the the RX Vega 56s and 64s, uh, they've kind of revolutionized yeah. the crypto world again because these things are able to put out like three times the amount of hash rate of pretty much any other you know card on the market that people were using for these things except like the what extremely are they running high uh, on average well uh, originally the when they when they first hit the market the 56s i believe were at about 400 or 425 and the 64s were at about 500 currently mm -hmm. if you can find them 
the 56s I've seen go from anywhere for, from 600 to 750 maybe. And the 64s are obviously higher than that because, you know, supply and demand, these things are flying off the shelves. I got lucky. I got mine when I did. I was able to pick up four in one shot and I actually got them at a bargain currently because I only paid 500 for mine. So, you know, $100 over what they were originally, you know, over the original retail, but still better off than most people yeah. are right now. And I still, you know, if you go look, there's people on eBay selling uh, used ones and still getting a decent amount of money for them. But it's yeah. because a lot of these cryptocurrencies are still relatively profitable to mine. I mean, Bitcoin at this point is obviously not profitable for pretty much anybody. Well, it's not really profitable for anybody to mine. It won't, it won't be the, profitable for small pools or small miners unless there's a massive collapse of the Chinese power infrastructure. Yeah, yeah. Well, because they have all those ASIC miners up and running and those are, that, that just destroys everything. But there's other coins out there that are either, you know, like Monero, for example. Monero, you can actually mine with a, you know, GPU or a CPU. I don't, and I don't even think you can mine with an ASIC currently. Um, and then there's, there's stuff like Vertcoin, which is another coin that I'm, I've become int very interested in recently. I think we talked about that. We might have talked about that on the last show. I don't remember. But uh, that one's actually designed to be ASIC, uh, ASIC mining resistant. Like their mission statement is we believe so much that everybody should always have an opportunity to mine this stuff that uh, we're going to continue to make sure that, you know, you can't mine, you can't mine with ASIC miners on this thing. So it'll always be for well, GPUs decentralizing the mining is a, is a, is a thought. I don't, I don't know if yeah, it's the, that's that exactly what it is rapidly centralized as fast as it was. Well, yeah, exactly. Like, you know, it's it doesn't matter if they centralize all of Bitcoin. Bitcoin doesn't hold a monopoly, so like it doesn't work like the Federal Reserve. No, exactly, and that's that's why you know, like I said, a lot of people are looking into other things because you know, Bitcoin, Bitcoin has its own issues. That's as, why we got to thank, know, but we got to thank the Lord for <laughs> for Satoshi Nakamoto, boys. Seriously, that, man, he it's, really just it's it really changed the whole world like the whole way it was going everything oh yeah bitcoin has kind of it's, it's changed it's, the game man it's changed the game if you walk if you walk in a straight line and someone just barely pushes you just a little bit to make you move you still have to move you know you still moved and that's what bitcoin has kind of done it's kind of moved stuff a little bit off a trajectory from where they were going well and the mean, funny thing still about a lot that is, is the, the more the more it's distance so the new. more distance you cover the more distance you cover off of that small change of angle, the greater that that gap becomes exactly. over time. And that's what we're witnessing, exactly. I think. I'd like to think that. Well, they can't hide their inflation at all. No no uh fiat, you know, paper, you know, magic money can it, they can't hide it against Bitcoin because it is a deflationary currency. You know what's funny? I actually got into this conversation with somebody in uh, in the uh, writer Discord server that I, I I mod at, and he was trying to say, well, it wouldn't be inflation because the dollars are already there. I'm like, yeah, but it would be effectively it would be because the only thing that's creating demand for those dollars is artificial demand. It's it's state produced demand. So the minute you know somebody counter you know contravenes that or you know counters it or goes around it, demand for the dollar collapses, and where are those dollars going to go? They're gonna come right back to where they came from, and then well, the Fed's gonna be, and then the Fed's gonna. The it's one of two things is gonna happen. Either the Fed's just gonna lock them up, and say, "Oh, well, you know, we're just gonna hold all of these so that we don't mess with uh, domestic supply, which is going to be ruinous," or they flood the market with it, which is also gonna be ruinous. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's lose lose for them. Uh, the, the, the dollar is so overprinted and so overextended that it's the reason we don't notice it is because most of that overextension is out sitting in for, yeah, exactly. foreign exactly. currency. Yep. It, it's sitting in like there's pallets of just billions of dollars of U.S. currency sitting in uh, treasuries across the world backing other fiat currencies so we have like this down the line backing of you know fake money so like all of the money that's sitting in saudi arabia right in their their vaults is all u.s cash well that's where all the gold and is, then man. they base their saudi arabian dollar <laughs> or whatever off of that 
how you know they 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 leverage it against that essentially and so that's the wealth that's the gold they're basing their currency off of essentially and yeah no if the exactly, dollar goes exactly. down or any of that comes back it's just gonna blow up because you know saudi arabia is already kind of flexing their muscle with that they're already you know they bought up like half a twitter they're buying into other stuff they've got like four or five trillion dollars that they're just gonna just dump into buying businesses and there's not really much anybody can do about it unless the dollar collapses and that money becomes worthless well it's only going to take a, a small margin of opec producing countries to trade and accept things other than dollars for that to happen really is not going to require much impetus at all it's just like a, a gentle push so a, a gentle breeze is going to make the yeah, whole cards drop but well yeah but you know look uh, well, I, actually i was gonna say I, maybe maybe a little more than a what breeze because an oil-backed crypto yeah but I, I i think, that's what needs to happen I, I i think there i think there might be just maybe maybe an element of fear for those uh oil coin those those uh aforementioned opec nations because uh, of what's happened in the past to anybody else who has decided to try to walk away from the dollar in any aspect oh yeah no no i i 100 percent agree but eventually and and i mean this history has has held this out i mean of course you know past past results can't necessarily predict future outcomes however there has been a very very strong trend where eventually groups that are under that are being held at gunpoint and being told to do things at gunpoint eventually just get tired and decide that the loss is worth it and who gives a shit anymore so no, i know yeah i mean i don't i don't think we're necessarily there and i think it's going to require a lot more incentive okay to move away from the dollar i don't think that's just going to naturally happen on its own i think it's going to be more of like a calculated move because it's going to be more profitable to do business to in something a... other than the dollar but i do think and I'm I'm pretty sure that that logic and and numbers will hold us out that it would require a very small shift in OPEC's acceptance of different denominations for for oil to affect a large scale change in the entire world uh, reserve the currency reserve market with the U.S. dollar. Hmm. Like it wouldn't take much. It would well, take very very little. It would take very little, so it's it's we're we're like you said we're teetering on a house of cards, and how do we move from a house of cards to a you know a concrete you know rock foundation? You know how, how do we how do we get there without everyone dying that's built on this house of cards? Because like well, I said, the whole world propped up on this US dollar. <laughs> Most exactly. people don't think of it that way. Well, yeah, but the the answer to that question is bringing. They don't think of if the dollar collapses, not everybody in America is not going to be jacked. You know, the you know Barbados, whose currency is probably backed off the dollar, is jacked. Everybody's as well, and everyone jacked. Everyone there yeah. starves. Oh yeah, yeah. The whole world. Well, hell, most people don't jacked. even think the dollar can collapse. That was that was the exact conversation it, I had with. It's like, akin oh, well, to the, the how world can, collapsing. How can, how can the dollar collapse at this the, point? The, Debt, the debt that's owed in dollars is denominated in dollars, so the dollar can never collapse. I'm like, of course it can. If I lend you $50,000 and I'm using currency that you make and then you devalue it by half and you pay me back $50,000, I'm half as well off as I was when I lent you $50,000. Why would I ever do business with you ever again? <laughs> I wouldn't. Or, I, I, or you know what? I might, but I definitely wouldn't use your paper for it. That's for damn certain. Well, that's that's funny because you know that that's still the argument. Like those type of arguments, is, I still see people making those daily. You know, with the with the news of you know with the the constant news of the crypto world that is slowly becoming more and more mainstream. You know, I mean, it's still pretty much most people still you know talk about Bitcoin when it finally makes the mainstream. But you know, there are more of the there. You know, there's so many altcoins out there as we were saying, and there's so many there's so much competition now, especially for. The competition for, you know, what Bitcoin or what Bitcoin originally was going to be, or at least what most people thought it was going to be, or or at least what I guess what the white paper kind of laid out, you know, the digital currency thing. Um, since that doesn't seem to be a viable option at the moment, or if ever at this point with Bitcoin, since the transaction fees are still pretty insane. And uh, you know, oh, holy shit, man! I tried to buy Bitcoin a little while ago. It was like twenty five fucking dollars, man. Yeah. Like I said, I paid huh. I paid a fifty God. I paid a fifty dollar almost fee to to get to to move to move what I had at one shot because I, I 
you know, I had everything in one wallet and I needed to move it. And I was like, whatever. Uh, I, you know, that was the situation that I had, that I had, that I was willing to pay that money. But yeah, it's, it's insane. But there's, you know, Bitcoin Cash is trying to take that. Um, I think Litecoin is still in the conversation yep, for that. Litecoin, Dash. Uh, d- yeah, Dash is another one uh, that I, I really like. And that's the one, you know, with the recent turmoil in the crypto world with, you know, Bit- Bitcoin. Well, yeah, it's been two weeks. It's been two weeks since we've been on the, we've been on the show. So, yeah. So since then, I mean, I can't even remember what it was. It was, it was only like 7,000 maybe two weeks ago, <laughs> 8,000 at the most the last time we did a show. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Since then, it, was, uh, it was approaching 8,000. <laughs> yeah. Si- si- since then, it shot up over 10,000. I think it hit 11,000 at one point. Yep, it and, did. It hit over 11,000. And then has since been bouncing back and forth between like 92 uh, or 90 three maybe and uh you know 104 somewhere in that range so bouncing back and forth pretty wildly for the past couple days because coinbase you know with all the i mean coinbase is talking about exchanges and stuff as we were before is still one of the biggest one although i know so many people who hate it i mean i had the bad experience with coinbase when i used it which is oh yeah i the, trust me i despise coinbase one of the things that soured like me no other originally. exchanges in alabama that i can use yeah well i can't well see that yeah i can't oh. use poland i can't new, use polian x here one. so that's the one Please, i would use by all means dave fucking start one i needed something other than coinbase so let's do it bud but uh, despite despite ever despite the negative press that we all know about it, it seems that there's a lot of people that are either don't care or are unaware because I think it was like they had like three hundred thousand new accounts sign up last week. Uh, which is oh like, yeah, man, fucking getting it. So getting it. So yeah, tons of people in there, and of course it caused everything. You know, it caused the whole everything. It caused Coinbase to shut down multiple times. I think over the past couple of days, I saw a lot of pissed off people, a lot of pissed off posts because everybody was missing the dip when they wanted to buy in. Um, well, and you know, and and ever and and the prices keep going crazy because a bunch of people finally became aware of Bitcoin or finally decided, well, it keeps going up. This is insane. I have to get in, and all bought in when it got closer to the eleven eleven thousand dollar mark. And then all panicked when it started dropping and immediately tried selling it all. <laughs> so, you know, a lot of noobs probably got washed. It got, got washed pretty good on that because they weren't prepared to uh, just ride it out like uh, most of us know to do now at this point. <laughs> Uh, so it caused everything to go haywire. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Bitcoin is still still an issue. Um, and I mean, Coinbase also, I guess, was in the news too. The, uh, there was a court in California that I guess ruled that they they ordered Coinbase that they have to because the IRS has been going after them to try to get them to turn over you know names of people you know, with you know connect them to people's accounts and stuff like that so they can start tracking it that way. And they had been denied up until that point. But this one court in California, I guess, ruled that they have to do it for anybody who tr- I think it's for anybody who either transferred or cashed out more than twenty thousand dollars in the past year. So I think that was like one hundred and fifty thousand people of uh, customers on Coinbase's uh, servers. I think I saw somewhere around that that would be affected by that ruling. So that sucks. Yeah. Another, another reason not to use. I mean, they claim that the Coinbase, of course, is claiming that they're still fight. They're fighting it and stuff like that. And I guess they'll maybe maybe they'll try to appeal. But that. I, I just think it's a whatever you can do to get that useless fiat out of your hand and get Bitcoin. Be, uh, do it because well, again, you can always even, pull out dividends of your bit your Bitcoin. You but know, again, I, uh, see, I don't even necessarily. I don't even necessarily. Well, I mean. I, I'm not opposed to people getting. And you some. can always shape. You can always send get all your coins off of Coinbase and get them onto another hot wallet or whatever, and they essentially don't exist. No one can stop them or take them from you unless they hack your account and get your private keys. Yeah, well, again, the gov- the government is trying to figure out ways to, to to intervene in this all the time. So, like at this point, because as we're talking about with the ridiculously high fees and all that other stuff, and you know the the problem of the fact that I, I think it was up to a hundred thousand unconfirmed transactions or something like that at one point. The other the other during all this mess in the past couple of days, which is I may might have been another all time high, which is not a good one you want to reach. <laughs> Uh, that's causing a lot. Yeah, of, no, that's no. Ca- that's causing a lot of issues with with Bitcoin. So I don't necessarily <laughs> know. I mean, I'm not opposed to people getting into Bitcoin at all. But I'm, you know, these days, if people still haven't gotten into crypto at all, you know, there's other options. You know, if you're going to find ways to, you know, you could buy. You know, if you're going to buy in, maybe buy in with something else. You know, not necessarily. Also, Bitcoin. do some research into what exchanges you're getting into because Poloniex was 
God, I remember like six to eight months ago, they were fucking notorious for just like letting leaving people fucking hanging, either bringing uh, crypto in or moving crypto out to elsewhere. Like the, it was fucking bad. It was bad, bad. Well, as, as that's far- why I'll never use Polo- that's why I'll never use a uh, Poloniex ever again. Oh, see, that's that's mm. that's interesting because that's actually the one that comes most recommended from all the people I know in the in the crypto world. <laughs> that's it's okay. So I, I mean, I will give it that it's a very stable platform and it's got probably some of the widest variety. So like you can do the most exchanging there, and their transaction fees aren't bad. But uh, I think mostly the uh, the wide variety and just the professional interface that you have available to you to do trading um, is. I mean, it, it's good. I mean, feature-wise and, and design-wise and build-wise, it's good. But it's ever since, you know, like about a year, year and a half ago, they've started to get a track record of holding transactions for mm. days, sometimes weeks. Interesting. Yeah, I've got so, a transaction on Changely that's been held up for you about still, you six still haven't got now, You still haven't gotten those Expanse coins? No, I still haven't. And I've asked them e- through email a couple of days. They just said they've been bogged down with Expanse. But I've tried a couple of other, you know, Changely transactions, same same way, not to the same wallet or anything. But uh, uh, they've went through. So, like, I'm really wondering if there was a glitch or something. I don't. I, it's probably what it was. But like, oh, I, I, I told moral you. of the I moral of the story. I'm not trying to throw. I'm not trying to throw Changely aware. under the bus. Yeah. Uh, well, just, yeah. Be, be aware if, if what you're doing. Something doesn't into. go through, like, be vigilant. Don't forget about it because, you know, that's money. It could be millions of dollars one day. I'd like to believe that, you know, 30 years from now, the Steam in my Steemit account is going to be worth, like, well, there probably won't even be dollars at that point. It'll probably be something else, but it'll be worth something. It'll be <laughs> worth more than it is now. Yeah. Well, that's like, you know, <laughs> that's like my, my, my Bitcoin that, uh, I mined way back when it was like your under- tens of thousands of bitcoins. Yeah, I actually, yeah, I actually have less than I thought for some. I don't know what the heck happened, but I, I, I only have like five thousand of them. But it's still, it's still like you know, out of all the, mi- oh, I mined them when they were like less than a penny. So you know, I think I figured it out the last time I looked. I could actually, that's the, that was actually going to be the one time I went onto an exchange again. But that's only because I think it's Cryptopia is the only exchange, or there might be one other, maybe one or two other ones now. But originally, Cryptopia is that the one, is that the one I'm thinking of? Was the only exchange that actually had Bitcoin, so at some point I'm gonna have to go on there because I was just gonna dump all those because I think they're up. To, it was up to like 75 bucks worth, and I was like, oh, I could just trade one of those in for about a Litecoin. I think that's when I was looking at it when Litecoin was still in the 70 range before that shot up too during the recent surge with just about everything. Although everything else seems to be leveling off in the past day or two, except Dash, which is still rising, which is cool. Again, though, one of those moments. Yeah, I wonder if it's. I wonder small. if it's continuing to rise because it's starting to. It's starting to find more applicability. Specifically uh, for the reasons we were mentioning, that it's it's easy to it's easy to use and it's it's quick to transact and unlike Bitcoin, which at this point is kind of monolithic. Yeah, well, it's definitely uh, you know jumping to the t- to the top of the pack for that you know taking over that spot. So I think it's you know that that probably has something to do with it. The fact that. Because yeah, it's it's every they all everything else trended down with Bitcoin when Bitcoin hit that high and then you know they, another all time high and then dropped again. Uh, everything else started trending down again except Dash. So yeah, it's definitely a possibility uh, that that has something to do with it. You would think, right? <laughs> um, well, I'd hope so. I yeah, certainly hope so. Yeah, that's just that's another one of those moments. I wish I picked up more because I was thinking about it like a couple of weeks ago when it was still down in like the four hundred range, and I was like, ah, uh, yeah, I'll get around to it. And I was like, oh, damn it. <laughs> So, but anyway, yeah, that's, uh, I mean, we were talking about the, you know, how, how, you know, this is how we get away from that with the dollar collapse and stuff like that, because yeah, you just, all there's, there's so many options out there. That's what we started talking about. And that's why, you know, that's why I got into the, I'm trying to get into the Monero mining game since that's the one I don't have. And, uh, I, I mean, I know some people are down on it, but to me, to me, it, it still seems to be like the most secure at the moment, or at least one of those. Although so apparently fluffy pony. I don't see. I don't see why people would get down on Monero. I mean, you know, say what you want about altcoins, and you can be a Bitcoin fanboy or a fanboy for any altcoin. But I mean, to, you know, just taking stepping back and looking at it, Monero is a pretty solid blockchain. Well, that's. I mean, I, I really don't see a whole lot. Like, there's really not a whole lot of downside to using it, or at least not that I've noticed. I mean, I could be wrong, but. Well, yeah, I, I think there was. Well, the, I just read something. A bunch of people were posting, I guess, gloating because there's there's been a there's been a, like a mini you know a 
friendly, not so friendly war in the in the in the community between like Dash and Monero. They're like the Dash fanboys and the Monero fanboys have been going at it for a while. Apparently, I uh, I'm friends with a couple of them on both sides, and I just I see them going at it all the time. And apparently, in other news, water's wet. Uh, uh, yeah, apparently one of the I guess he is, I don't know if he's the head dev or one of the, you know one of the devs that guy Fluffy Pony from Monero. Uh, recently, like within the past couple of days, made some statement that they're actually going to have to implement some second layer or something or other. I can't remember what it was at this point that uh, that Dash actually has that they've been making fun of Dash of for like the past couple of years, like basically saying they're going to have to implement that now in order to <laughs> stay competitive with Dash. Yeah. Uh, so, Damn! It sucks when you have to eat crow. It and, sucks. Yeah, and I know I, I know a lot of I know a lot of people that are down on Monero just because they think Fluffy Pony is a real asshole, and he seems to be pretty much an asshole. <laughs> but whatever. I mean, like you said, I think it's a solid technology. So, um, you know, and because it to me it still seems to be like one of the, if not the most secure co- uh, coin at the moment. You know. Because I know I, it seems to be the coin of choice for people who are trying to a term I just learned today. I I, I didn't I wasn't aware this was. Uh, I mean I'd heard the the idea, but I didn't put it, heard learn this way. Like washing your bitcoins, if you're trying to, Ooh. you know, basically, uh, you know, move them in and out okay. of wallets in order to make them uh, more untraceable. Uh, Monero yeah. seems to be the coin of choice for people to doing that right now. So you know that's oh not, speaking speaking of speaking of which. Um, and I, I don't remember where I heard this, but when we were talking about uh, uh, swapping currencies, like uh, uh, you were doing with uh, Shapeshifter, uh, where it just directly translates one to the other. Yes. Um, I, I heard or read somewhere that uh, doing that, that process actually allows the, the, the block to take on the attributes or properties of both of the currencies that you swap to. So like if you swap from Bitcoin to a more secure crypto... Um, that block actually att- the, uh, attains the attributes of that more secure crypto. Interesting. I, I even after you swap it back to Bitcoin. Hmm, that's interesting. I mean, that may have something to do. I, with- I, like I said, I don't I don't remember where I read or heard that, but that might be something to look into. Yeah, that's. I mean, that'd be cool. That would be. Uh, that'd be pretty fucking fantastic. Well, that that'd would make sense. That would make sense based on what I have been reading the past couple of days about why people do that. <laughs> you know, that would actually make sense if that actually did occur. I don't know if you know. I, I don't know anything about that, but if that's true, that would make sense to me. Uh, like I said, based on what I know now. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I like I said, I don't. I don't see the reason other than you know hating Fluffy Pony to uh, not to be down on Monero. You know, and uh, it's been up recently. I mean, it's. I think it top two hundred. Uh, today or yesterday for the first time so you know you can still get in you know you can if you want to buy in you can still get in relatively cheap compared to some of the other crypto you know can, you know like i said dash is still up over 700 at least the last i looked and you know some of the other ones actually i don't keep, even keep track of anymore because i got rid of all of them like ethereum and zcash i finally gave up i gave up on those and <laughs> switched to other ones so i don't even try i don't even track what they're doing anymore but i know everything else is still pretty much up but so you can still get in pretty cheap and as i was saying earlier like you can still mine it pretty much anybody can mine it because as we talked about as i talked about it on might have been the previous episode or the one before that that whole miner gate fiasco uh that i try i tried out for like three days gave up on but it's you know you were still mining something it's just you needed to mine a whole bunch of it to actually be able to cash out type of deal but you know the the idea is that anybody can technically mine um some of these cryptocurrencies like monero because you can do it on a cpu yeah you can even do it on you know on your on your phone cpu (laughs) and that's the danger is when any old laptop turns into a node it's it, you can't stop it. Well, exactly, and that's what that's why I that's why I'm kind of interested in currencies like that, you know. And with the with the type of with with the type of hardware that I bought, it's all de- it's all designed to work with the with the different crypto note codes and stuff like that, and all the other and all, and a lot of the other stuff, you know, like uh, what should I call it, Monero, and then also. It, it does work with Ethereum, but Ethereum at this point is just too. Uh, it's still you still need a ridiculously high hash rate <laughs> to be able to mine that stuff. Yeah. Uh, so it's just not as profitable anymore. But it's still possible if you want to spend some money on that. Um, uh, I think uh, the other one that I'm I'm really interested, like I mentioned before, Vertcoin. You know, I may I may actually end up switching to that at some point because Vert's still around five bucks at this point. Um, 
I think so. That's the other cool thing yeah. about uh, mining all of these other altcoins is uh, the ones that have a little bit smaller vault, like uh, not not quite so much volume, or uh, that haven't quite reached their market cap. You can you can mine those fairly easily. I mean, Monero's Monero's pretty big now. I mean, it's still like you said, it's still you can still mine it, but like uh, Vertcoin, Purecoin. I mean, I have however many other <laughs> yeah. coins you want to talk about. You can still mine all of those. And like, yeah, of course, they're not really worth a ton, but they're easy to mine. So and you know, they could be. And even if exactly, they, even, and, and even their if, price will fluctuate. E- even if even if they become like you know the next what Monero is now and only get to like two hundred dollars, you've still made you know depending on how you set things up and stuff, you you probably made a decent amount of money if you mined a bunch of them when it was easy to mine and they were cheap. You know <laughs> what? Hell, I mean. Well, I mean, hell, even like something like uh, uh, Vertcoin, right? Um, it's like five dollars now, right? And yeah. I'm sure it's it's relatively. E- I, I don't I don't suspect it's particularly difficult to mine. I think it's it doesn't require a whole I lot was, of. Uh, well, I was reading up on it today, and like they, you know, they're obviously all about the decentralized thing. That's their like I said, that's their whole mission statement is to keep it decentralized as possible. But for some reason, I think like I was reading up that like you end up getting like half the hash rate that you get on uh, on their blockchain on, on there on there when you mine there than you do with some of the other stuff so so you still have to get a decent type system not you don't have to go crazy but you know you're not going to be able to be as successful with like you know a crappy little pc that you may, may be able to get away with it you know some other point type of deal um, but yeah it's definitely right definitely right easier. but i mean i mean it's it's not it's not like it's not cost prohibitive right and i mean even if it doesn't go like say it doesn't ever go above ten dollars you're still mining blocks that are worth ten bucks yeah, exactly. And, and I and I sus- and I suspect that you can actually get a, a decent return doing it that way. And I don't think you're going to be left holding the bag. Like I think you'll have enough hash power to solve enough blocks to make it worth your while in a very in a relatively short period of time. I don't think it's going to require all that much effort. Yeah, I've, yeah. Like I said, I've actually been look. I was I was reading up on that today because I've been you know I've been trying to get my I've been trying to get my system up and running. Um, it's been quite an adventure. Um, now that we're finally getting back, to, I can only uh, imagine. I need to do this. I, I have been meaning to do this for quite some time. But well, I've well, yeah. Several. Other- well, yeah. Like I said, like, like I said, we, this, this is what we started with. But yeah, so so finally getting back to that, unburying the lead for the second time. We uh, <laughs> we're 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 talking about me, who, as we've mentioned throughout the show and plenty of times before, you know, I'm not computer illiterate, but I don't. I'm not super proficient. Fiend in a lot phone. Of these areas. Fiend phone. Okay. And I'm back. Fiend phone. Fiend back, phone. Dude. Was it just me or did everybody do it? I think, yeah, I think Jeremy's server just crashed. Okay. It must have been a momentary glitch because I'm still. Yeah, we're back. It's weird. That was oh, strange. yeah. Actually, that earlier, was... earlier it was me. My internet dropped out for some weird reason. I, I don't know. I couldn't tell you why, but uh, yeah, that, that, would, that, that time definitely wasn't me. Okay. Well. Yeah, like I said, it's, it must have been a momentary glitch because everything appears to be fine at the moment. But anyway, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, we're talking about me, who's not very, uh, you know, not, not a not a complete idiot, but not super proficient. And you know, I, I'm having I'm having some difficulties at the moment. But I, there's there's some weird weird thing going on in my system that I haven't been able to figure out. But uh, I got a, I got not only did I get like farther than I originally thought I might have been able to get pretty much on my own uh, <laughs> but I definitely got I got a lot farther than a lot of my detractors originally who I went to to ask for advice or help or some kind of help with uh, like Michael W. Dean <laughs> who basically told me he didn't think I could get past like you know trying to figure out how to install the windows on a brand new hard drive uh, you know and all that stuff Oh come on! Um, well, no, you know, like I, I've, I've never, ha- I, I mean, I had to learn how to do a bunch of things that I've never do before. But I, you know, I just, I went online and I read about it, and I figured out how to do much of the stuff. So if somebody like me can be able to pull this off, where, like I said, I have some kinks that I have to work out currently, but as of right before we started uh, recording the show, uh, I had finally got my system uh, to almost capacity, uh, running at almost uh, full capacity. Uh, getting the hash rate of I think seventy seven seventy seven hundred, um, so what is that seven point seven kilo hash uh, for Monero, which right now is still good enough to pull in I think like four uh, four Monero a month, maybe five, like four four and a half Monero a month. 
So that's not bad. It'll pay for itself yeah. in like what five months. Well, yeah, like and again, like I was, I was almost, I you know, I was almost talked out of this by some people that I I follow and listen to a lot. Who you know, one of one of whom was like, you know, who's huge in Monero and has has, has a ton of Monero, um, but was like saying the other day, like unless you have fifty grand, it doesn't make sense that you might as well just spend the money on the Monero, you know, just buy Monero instead. And then I started looking into it and I was like, well, wait a minute, I'm finding all this stuff, uh, especially with, as I mentioned earlier, I think the, uh, the, the addition of the, the Vega 56 and 50, uh, 64 graphics cards uh, that hit the market uh, a few months or six months back or whatever that blow away pretty much everything else out there. You, uh, you know, it's, beca- it's become profitable again if you can get these things. So, you know, I, I was lucky enough to grab them before they went up. And now I have, uh, you know, I, I got a system that's pushing that and with tweaking it and uh, getting, the, the, getting the kinks that I have uh, worked out and tweaking it. Uh, my original design was supposed to net me somewhere in the neighborhood of like 8,200, I think. And I was able to do that for, I think, three, uh, just, just under three grand. Uh, including, you know, tax, you know, whatever, because I ended up getting I ended up the cheapest yeah. price for pretty much everything I needed. I ended up finding on Amazon. So I just ordered it all through there. And they, you know, other than a couple of holdups with some items that took a little longer, surprisingly, the, the Vega 56s, which uh, were, which I thought were going to be the ones that get held up because they were already in, becoming in short supply at that point. Uh, luckily, all four of mine came through, you know, on on schedule. Um, but it was other silly. It was other. Well, not silly because like necessary things like the RAM ended up taking two days longer than it should have. And then when it showed up, it was the wrong type. So I had to send it back. <laughs> um, so I couldn't get very far. Like oh, like all the pieces sat there for like three or four days and I couldn't do anything. And it was just kind of driving me nuts. Uh, the frame I ordered, you know, the, the frame for the rig I ordered originally because I was going to make one. And then I was just like, you know what? I just want to get all the pieces and get this thing up and running. So screw it. I'll spend a little extra money and buy one that somebody's already put together. Um, it ended up getting lost in the mail. Like, well, at least that's what somebody probably grabbed it because it was probably in a box that said what it was. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. like Amazon for the first time ever when I went to go check Amazon to see what was up with my orders uh, under the under the frame thing it said uh, within like three days like as a, you know everything everything was ordered on prime and everything was supposed to come through prime so it was supposed to be guaranteed two days and uh, on the third day guaranteed or, three days five days from now well on the on the third day already there was a message from them saying yeah there's there may be a problem with your item you can either wait for a couple more days or you can you can immediately apply for a refund. <laughs> I've never gotten that type of message. So like they knew right away that something happened to my package. <laughs> so I never got that. So again, I, I just went online and searched how, you know, other people, how other people had built their own rigs, you know, out of wood because, you know, that's one of the safer things you can put them, you know, you can put the motherboard on if you're going to put it on anything. Um, without because you don't have to use you don't have to use the risers if you do that and uh you know i figured out how to make a cheap frame at like for like 20 25 bucks worth of, par- of parts <laughs> you know wood and screws and like whatever and uh it was it was the, it was the cards that obviously cost the most money and you know if you were going to try to duplicate my system right now um you would be pay, pay, paying a little bit uh well quite a bit more <laughs> uh because you know the cards have gone up like i said a, what a hundred to two hundred dollars, you know, yeah, maybe yeah, two hundred dollars more than they used to be, three hundred dollars more in some cases, uh, and then uh, even, even the motherboard yeah. I got, which which is the what the heck did I get? It's the uh, ASRock H ten H one ten Bitcoin plus one. That's the first, you know, they touted themselves as the first. You know, it's got thirteen slots for thirteen graphics cards on it, so it's like designed <laughs> for mining, and uh, I got. <clears throat> even that's gone. I got up. a question. Uh, I was, I was, yeah, I was just gonna say, even that's gone up. I think thirty or forty bucks since I bought it a week or two ago. <laughs> I, I got a question about the graphics cards because I'm aware that you can mine with a GPU, but I've never. I mean, I and granted, I've never really looked into it all that much, so I might be asking an obvious question. Is there a particular type of GPU? Like, I know there's purpose-built GPUs for this particular, you know, purpose, but. Does it matter what GPU you put in there, or does it just matter what the specs are on the GPU? 
Uh, I think it's more of the specs because I mean I don't know what what you're talking about of like what type because again I'm not that knowledgeable. Well, I just, like, like I know there's example, like AMD there's, there's cards, there's built. NVIDIA cards, there's um, you know different, and they range anywhere. At even like new ones range anywhere from like a hundred dollars to a thousand dollars. Well, yeah, well, like because well, you were talking about like the uh, the the fifty six and the sixty four. I'm assuming those are purpose built GPUs. For mining, correct? They're not just no. I don't. I don't even. Know, I don't general. even. I don't even know if they were. I think they're there because most of these things are designed for gaming. And the people, well, okay, people, so that was that was my that was basically my question. I think like, these are. I think these are, are specific ones. Or I think these are designed. No, because no, you you need you could just add pretty much anyone. Then I guess because yeah, these these were all like a lot of this stuff. When you, if you go read up on it, you know you'll read it. You'll come across a lot of mining stuff. Obviously, if you just search information about these different products, but uh, you'll also come across a lot of uh, information from like forums from people talking about gaming and how they're using from game for gaming, um, and how they're doing some of the same uh, tweaking. To them, um, to in order to get them better performances on their on the, on the graphics of the games they play, you know. So it's that I, I'm pretty sure that's what they're really designed for. But they, you know, it's, it also helps with this. So yeah, pretty much anything. I mean, I've you know I've seen people throw systems together with uh, you know a lot smaller, cheaper cards that depending on what they're mining and depending on how many of them they can get going at once, then, uh, you know, they still might be able to be, get, be, be getting something out of that. And it'll end up being more, more, you know, not more profitable, but it'll still be somewhat profitable because you're putting out a lot, you know, you're requiring a lot less power to run those things too. You know, because these, the, the bigger cards obviously require a lot more power. Uh, you know, I think the average is well. Looks like it's uh, rapidly approaching the day where I have to take out a ten thousand dollar loan and buy like ten Titans. <laughs> Fuck, <laughs> son of a bitch. Yeah, but it's 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 been an interesting experience. You know, I, like I said, I, I've learned a lot. It's it's been somewhat frustrating because you know certain things happen. Like you know, one of the first like go round or two, like I screwed something up with the guide I was following, or I left out one stupid little step that I didn't think was important. Uh, because it, I thought I had done something else that would have been similar, you know, that was already similar to that, and then it, it screwed it screwed things up. Uh, and then there's been some weird the weird thing going on that I can't figure out. And now I've got the guy who wrote the guide uh, has is, is 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 like super cool. This guy, like I, I've talked before about how I don't I don't use Reddit like ever, and I try to stay away from it. Um, but I found it's very uh, useful for these type of purposes. And the guy who wrote the guide. Uh, that I've been trying to follow that was like, you know, designed for these specific cards and how to get them at, you know, the, the, uh, the highest hash rate and get their, get their, uh, volt, you know, get everything, get their uh, power consumption down that, uh, he's actually right. He, I've, I've been inter interacting with him and I, I caught an email from him just before we started recording. I haven't, I didn't read through all of it yet, but I, it started, it started off with, I'm really sorry you're having all these problems because I, it, it seems really bizarre. And then he went into a whole couple more paragraphs after that. So I'm thinking he may actually still be, you know, concerned enough that he's trying to help me, which is great. Well, that's nice. Yeah. It's, you know, so I've been, you know, like I said, most of it's, I've just been, I've been reading and I've been reading and I've been reading. So I've, that's where I've spent most of my time. And that's also why there hasn't been any Patreon episodes out, even though I kept promising I was going to finally get to those. Sure. Uh, that's I, the reason why. Oh it, yeah, it, it, it is. Uh, <laughs> I, I actually, like I was up to like six o'clock in the morning, two nights in a row. Uh, I think, I think it was like Saturday night and then Sunday night. Cause after I did the fiends, I ended up staying up like a couple more hours after, no, it was Sunday night after the fiends and then Monday night again, just trying to get everything done. Because I knew originally, I knew I could, I wasn't going to be able to do Tuesday night again because I was doing the fiends again, and I figured I would just fall over by after that. And then I couldn't do it Wednesday night because I had to be up for court today. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was. I I, 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 was, I can't. I I've I don't even want to talk because I'm so furious about how those courts are up there. Like I can't imagine how kangaroo it is, and here it is. It just. It's like it never ends, and this was all because someone trespassed. <laughs> These damn Speak trespassers, man! These Actually, shredders. Speaking, they gotta go. Speaking, speaking of trespassing, uh, there was a, a slight kerfuffle because we, all of us who took the final, even though we're not really supposed to talk about it, we got back, we got together after class, and we were like going over questions that all of us kind of stumbled on, and uh, so I'll just I'll just pose it to you guys. If you have a fence around your property and you have barbed wire on your fence, um, and somebody climbs on, you know, tries to climb over your fence and gets tangled up in the wire, and 
you know, subsequently they, they go to the hospital, get treated, get an infection, and die. Who's liable for that? No hmm. one. I Give it some thought. I don't know. I got distracted. I wasn't actually listening fully. Can you run it by me? Oh, again? that's nice. I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad my, my conversations matter. No. <laughs> no, Dave, Dave's correct. You're the, the homeowners, the property owner is actually not liable. However, it has to be it has to be like basically you can defend your property any way you want without lethal force so long as that method of protection is like can be appraised prior to attempted to trespass on the property so like uh um hidden turrets or whatever that's a no go apparently that's not a that that's not a thing that's that's allowable oh man I know. I'm like, these motherfuckers are trespassing. Ruined, Fuck off. Ruined my plans for my new place. I know. What if I replace I it with uh, high-powered silly string? Uh, I think <laughs> you might be able to get away with that. So that's not going <laughs> to cause any harm. Unless somebody's deathly allergic, in which case you might be liable. Oh, just stay off my property. <laughs> Right there on the other side of my property line, that's where you can go fuck yourself. <laughs> exactly. Yep, right over there. On the other side of that hill right where my property there. line ends. So that's where you can go fuck yourself. I guess yourself. we were going we could wrap up with this little thing, this little tidbit here. I, I was Oh well, yeah, well before before, before, before we jump before it. before we jump into that, I, I just want to reiterate again. So yeah, I've, you know, uh what I what I was basically getting at is, you know, pretty much anybody can still get in and mine this stuff. Uh, if you want to go that route. So for, you know, all those people that are constantly saying, oh, I missed the boat on so many of these other things. It's like, there's so many ways you could still get involved. And if somebody like me can figure out how to do this for the most part on, on your, on his own. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I, you know, I had, I had my system, like I said, successfully up and running before the show started for a few hours. I just had to shut it down obviously so we could record, but, uh, it, you know, if, if I could do that for under three grand, uh, or just, you know, I think it was just, yeah, just under three grand, then, uh, yeah, pretty much anybody could do this. So get on that stuff. Yeah. I'll, I'll put some, I'll put some links in the, in the show notes of the, of the stuff I followed. And, you know, basically the, uh, you know, if you, if, if, if you follow the, the blog, the, whatchamacallit, the forums or anything that the people who write these, uh, guides are on and actually, uh, they, they interact and are very responsive for the most part, which is great. Uh, you can see the success rate. Uh, with so many people, fight, you know, even if they have problems at the beginning, they're finally like, "Oh, look at that!" Uh, you know, whatever, whatever we fight, you know, whatever we did, we fixed it now, and, and now it's up and running. And you know, ever so many people are being successful at this right now. It's great. So, definitely possible. So, anyway, yes, Dave, you uh, you had another topic you wanted to talk about briefly, right? Well, the the Supreme Court is uh, looking at some, you know, all these. Cases keep getting thrown out of court once people find out that stingrays, you know, were the stingray cell phone, fake cell phone towers were used to get all the evidence because yes. it's technically illegal for the state to do that. Uh, so the Supreme Court's looking at just just taking them away because they're slowing down the courts more than they're speeding them up. You know, shocker. <laughs> oh, I know, right? Government getting in the way of itself. I can't. Uh, that's that's unspe that's unthinkable. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess as far as you know, as far as having to deal with government and wh how much I care about what government does, I mean, I guess that's a good thing, right? If if the if they actually do that, because it's. I mean, I'm assuming the police or maybe some other agency will still find a way to make use of such tactics and get away with it. But, you know, I, I guess I don't think there's any way to stop it. But, but this they, is one of those if positive they're having things. to admit that. Well, they can't keep throwing out all these cases that they spend all this man hours on all this time and still justify stuff. They still have to run quasi legitimate, you know? Yeah. Well, they have to. I mean, think about that. We've dis uh, we've discussed this. The state is some most of what the state offers is a demand by most people they've just monopolized it and take it and bastardized it so when we're talking about these big issues they have to be taken away from the state they can't be just laid up forever in the state's hands we have to do something well yeah well, no, that's what and I was, well, I was when the supreme court moves in on this stingray technology which is a complete 
abashment of the Fourth and Fifth Amendments, essentially, it, they ha it has to stop because they have to quasi run legitimately, and this is just completely over the rails, you know. Well, yeah, but that's... even to the public eye. Well, yeah. So, like I said, that's why I'm saying it's like I get, it's it's po it's po you know as as far as government goes, I guess it's a good thing, right? You know. You take what you can, kind of like you know. I, I'm I'm for no taxes, but I'm not against. I don't think they're going to stop it, but yeah, but no, but it's kind of like I'm not for I'm I'm for no taxes, but I'm not against tax cuts, you know, type of thing. Like I don't care what I don't care what the what, the what the courts say, but if they rule like this, then I'll take it, type of deal, right? Yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean you're right. I don't, you're a statist. I don't. I don't think you're they. A statist. I don't think, Super statist. I don't think they could stop it, but whatever. You know, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna cry that they made this decision, right? It's it's like a hurricane blowing through and your house survives just because like you like hoped it didn't blow over or whatever. <laughs> well, and it, it goes back about, to you know it goes back to like okay, well, you know, if the state does something that that ends up, you know, not making things worse, yeah, uh, you know, golf clap. Golf clap. Yeah, you know. There that's you go. hey, cool. That's a that's a win. It's kind of it's not much of a win, but it's a little bit of a win. There you go. You know, there, there's feel our, better about there's it. There's our show title: Golf Clap for the State. There we see. I don't know. I just, I've, I've always, I've never understood this, this idea where, like, if something that ultimately has a net positive effect, even if it's a very, very minor one, is still just like it's bad, and it should, it, we should just decry it as being bad. I say, take you know, be happy for the things that go right. Well, exactly. That's, that's not to say that's not to say, that's not to say that you're like, oh yeah, cool. We need more of this. No, I mean, it's, you know, obviously the ultimate preference is, well, we don't want any state. But when the state, you know, does things that shoot its shoots itself in the foot, like why not be happy about it? Oh, exactly. Yeah, I think that's uh, yeah. I mean, and what what else are you gonna say? That yeah, this this stingray stuff. I mean. It's obviously they've been used. They were using it a lot longer than people were, were aware of it, and I think people like us were probably more aware of it than most people. <laughs> I think a lot of people just kind of either it was another one of those things that people heard about and forgot about, just like whatever. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Oh yeah, yeah. What what can oh, I yeah. do about it? I can't stop it. Well, you can I, go or, to your police or, department or, or, or and even, say, "Hey, are you guys doing this?" Or even but worse, no, you're too scared. Even even worse, it was you know I have nothing to hide, you know. I, I would take I would take I would take I you know what do we do about this or you know what can we do about this over you know the the you know I have nothing to hide people so I don't you know I don't care they suck <laughs> they're worse. Um, hey if hey if you have if you don't have anything to worry about if you have nothing to hide. Yeah, I want to punch people. You know. <laughs> makes me want to violate like phrases like that phrase makes me want to violate the nap. That's everyone that says that has an Alexa in their house. <laughs> or one of those Google. <laughs> those things, I must say, those things are fun to play with, but I will not own one. I had no, a absolutely not. I had a Even though of I know my that. phone can be turned on to listen, that's like we were just talking about. They have to use different uh, FISA warrants and stuff. They can't just do it um, like everyone thinks they can. Uh, and, you know, so... It, <laughs> Well, the fight, like I was saying, I, they, think, I think I was saying this before that before we started the show when we started talking about this. The, the FISA courts, unfortunately, anything that comes from it's them a rubber stamp is basically a rubber, rubber stamp. stamp but it's it, it is it's oh, that, unfortunately, I think it's like a double edged sword because that's like one of those things. Like on one hand, okay, it's an extra level they have to go through, even if it is kind of rubber stamp to a certain extent. It's still like an extra step they have to take, which you know, any more work you have to make the state do is is a good thing. Um, but it also costs more money, you know, it's, it's more, you know, more taxpayer dollars that are being used for that bullshit too. <laughs> so it kind of, it's good and bad. Yeah. But yeah, I think, uh, well, you know, I've always held it like every once in a while, this, the, the courts get it right. Yeah. It's like a broken clock is right twice a day. This is true. Just because the state is doing it doesn't mean they're incapable of doing it correctly. I know that sounds stupid to say, but they've just got a monopoly. We have to remove the monopoly. That's. People get so conflated with everything and they want to compartmentalize everything. All these people have done is taken certain services and monopolized them. We have to take them down. Any, any decentralization of any of the services. You know, Bitcoin, we've talked about majority of the podcast, is a direct affront to their central banking. So basically every, every 
pillar of communism, we basically have to decentralize it. We have to make it to where it can't be centralized. And then communism goes away. You get what I'm saying? Privatize everything. You have to privatize everything. Privatize all the things. Literally all of those I want to privatize my roads. I want to become a road baron. (laughs) You got to privatize cities. You have to privatize your house. You have to privatize all of it. No, other people can privatize that shit. I want to privatize my roads. I want to become the road czar. That's what I want to be. That's that's actually going to be my title. That's I'll have a road company, and my my business title will be Road Czar. Road Czar, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Fuck yeah, that'd be awesome. God, I love capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on anyway, that, on that note, <laughs> I think we should get wrapping up. Um, but uh, before some something else happens, <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, it's it's good to be back with you, gentlemen. Uh, it's nice chatting with you again after a couple, you know, after a week off. But um, have anything else we, you want to say before we close out? Well, taxation is theft, um, and commies need to get out, out, out. That's about it. Yep. Privatize everything. Just go back to what I said before. Privatize fucking everything. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's the goal. All right. Well, this has been the Seeds of Liberty podcast. All of our information can be found at solpodcast.org. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm behind on putting the Patreon up, but we do still have like, uh, I think there's like eight episodes up there now. So anybody who hasn't signed up, there's plenty of stuff for you to go through if you still uh, want to uh, reach out to us. And, uh, you know, all the uh, all the links for all our crypto wallets uh, are in the well, not all of our crypto wallets, but the, the the stuff for the show is is in the show notes. And probably the easiest way, I guess, especially right about now, if you want to help out the show that won't cost you anything is if you are doing any Amazon shopping throughout the holiday se- the upcoming holiday season, especially, please, please, please do consider using our Amazon affiliate link. We finally have it working. Uh, it's not up on the website yet. Well, it's it's on. You can find it on the website, but you know, Paulie um, hasn't put up the button that I asked him to a bunch of times. <laughs> uh, but see, since he is helping us for free, I can't really complain about too many things. And you know, because we didn't agree on a we didn't agree on a contract of like prompt service for his uh, free labor. Um, so I'm cool with that. Yeah, but you can fi- I'm just glad he helps us. Exactly. So you know, and and uh, you know, and he uh, hosts our. You know he's he's hosting our uh, content on his servers uh, for free as well. So we love you, Paul Gordon. Uh, you know you know I'm just teasing. So anyway, but you can find I don't you can <laughs> you can find the links on that uh, what call it on, on the show notes. Uh, I, I believe it, it's a Bitly link, and I believe it's a, a, a Bitly slash uh, SOL podcast Mike. Which uh, you know, it it takes you it, because it, the original link we had for some reason doesn't work, but the one that takes you directly to the mic that I and plenty of other people highly recommend if you're considering to getting into podcasting, uh, the Audio Technica twenty uh, twenty one hundred or the uh, two zero uh, twenty yeah excuse me two thousand and five yes I'm all right tonight um, yes uh, either one of those but yeah if you use that link and uh, go shopping through there we get a little kickback from uh, anything you purchase so again that's probably the best way to donate to us because it doesn't cost you anything so please consider using that link all right so once again this has been the Seafloaty Podcast and we'll catch you next time peace peace in the Middle East happy Kwanzaa
Are you tired of stinky socialists trying to take over America? And are you also tired of theorists talking about the free market as a cure-all for every problem with no first-hand experience of how the market actually works? Well, the Truth, Justice, American Way app gives you wall-to-wall shows by hosts who not only understand the market, but tell you how they make money in a variety of patriotic endeavors. The Truth, Justice, American Way app for Android is 24-7 streaming audio content on the topics of finance, liberty, self-defense, and technology. All the hosts are all American Americans from all over America. And the app is made in Wyoming, the cowboy state. Because you should buy American, even with free Android apps. Truth, Justice, American Way. Useful information, compelling personalities, and superior American audio quality. Go on the Google Play Store or the Amazon App Store and search Truth, Justice, American Way. God bless each and every one of you, and God bless America.